Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Edge Sports Network. We've got another interview for you guys today. We got Luke Lowy, William and Mary men's basketball. Luke, thanks so much for joining us here on the site today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Great to have you on. Looking forward to this one. Um, I want to start off here. I mean, you know, obviously we've got this pandemic going on right now. How has this offseason kind of looked for you? You know, how have you been staying busy, kind of keeping on track so you're ready for this upcoming season? Yeah, so uh, this offseason's definitely been different than my previous years, mm-hmm. but uh been trying to stay as active as possible. We've gotten workouts from our um, strength conditioning staff from school to follow and been able to follow those pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, we started off with, you know, gymless at-home workouts kind of thing when, when everything was shut down, but as things started to open back up, we've been able to get into weight rooms and gyms and stuff. Yeah, so we've been staying busy, starting mm-hmm. to play pickup now a lot more. Um, got got gyms open to get shots up and get our workouts in. So, I mean, being in Wisconsin, I don't think it's as bad as other places in the country right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty loose. Like my high school has now opened up for people to um, work out in, and even the students at the high school are able to be there um, for team practices and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. that opens things up for me to be able to stay busy. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty nice right there, I'd say, then, um, that you're kind of able to find some routine right now because I know it's just kind of been, you know, hit or miss, really, I guess is the easiest, easiest way to put it, um, just trying to find things to do and, and find a routine that you can kind of stick to during this time. So, I mean, I know you're coming off a great year here. This past season was your best season of college basketball so far. You averaged 10.7 points, a couple rebounds, a couple assists, shot the ball so well, too, at 54%. Um, so, I mean, your first two seasons, you got quite a bit of play time for an underclassman. Your first season as an upperclassman, you come out, kind of had this breakout year. What kind of went into it for you? I mean, how did you just feel this past season with William and Mary here? Yeah, definitely. There's, there was definitely a difference in how I felt between my first two years and last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I just felt a lot more confident and comfortable having a lot more fun last year than the. Um, I felt – more stress, I would say, and pressure a little bit my first two seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, so being able to play more comfortably um, and with more freedom last year helped me have a better season. I would say a lot of that was from the new coaching staff and, and just our team atmosphere last year was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we played together as a team really well and um, the coaches gave us confidence to play how play how we knew how to play out on the floor and uh, just have fun doing it. So that's, I don't know. I just had a lot more confidence last year than I had in the previous two years, I think. So that helped me a lot. It really showed on the court this season. I know you guys went 21 and 11. You were a big part of that right there. And just kind of walking through your career here, your first year, you averaged like five minutes per game. Second season, you kicked that up all the way to 24. And then this past year, you were over 30 minutes per game. I think at 31 it was. Um, so how did you kind of have to adjust to the changes in play time? I mean, from your first year to your second, you made a huge jump, nearly 20 minutes. And then this season, you made even more of a jump. You're playing over 30 per game now. How do you kind of have to get ready for that increase in opportunity right there? You know, uh, my first year, so my first year, I played behind a really good, um, really good player, David Cohen. Mm-hmm. Um, for, and he was, I mean, he played he was playing upwards of 35 plus to 40 minutes a game, every game. And he was extremely durable. So, um, you know, I was kind of, I, I wasn't really playing that much. And I mean, being a freshman, I was the new ro- uh, role that I was in. Mm-hmm. And then the next year having him graduate, I was kind of forced into a new role um, being put on the court to play. And um, it was definitely a big jump for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I, and handle that really well. But, uh, I mean, last year I, I kind of switched positions really. Mm -hmm. Like I had been playing point guard strictly only point guard my freshman and sophomore year, I think. Mm -hmm. And then last year, um, the coaching staff kind of opened it up for all guards to be mostly interchangeable. So last year I played a little bit of point guard, a lot of two, a lot of three actually started the season starting games at, at the three. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, which was fine, and I think I felt more comfortable in that position and helped me um, play with more freedom and confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as the increase in minutes, um, I don't know. I Last year I felt comfortable playing playing 
you know, all those minutes. Uh, I didn't really feel the pressure or whatever that came with it, but I think, I mean, it was really easy as a guard playing all that, all those minutes, especially like on the defensive end um, mm-hmm. with, with the art, with the size we had like with Andy and Nate having those guys behind us mm-hmm. um, and just playing with those guys, having them be so experienced and such good players, it just made it easier for everyone to play. Um, mm-hmm. or, no doubt about it. Um, I mean, you look, as you said, you looked really comfortable this year. I know just kind of looking at your game too, you're really explosive, really quick. You play with a lot of aggression um, and you can score inside and outside. One thing that you've really improved on is your three point shooting. I mean, you made, a huge jump this season when it came to three-point shooting. You led the CAA in three-point shooting percentage. And I know your first couple seasons you were shooting, you know, 23%, 29%. And then this past year you come out, you shoot 44% from three. How did you make that big of a jump? Because that's not something we see a lot, guys being able to kind of make that significant of an increase in three-point shooting in the middle of their college career. How did you kind of do that? That's uh. That's a question I sometimes ask myself, but um, as far as my first two seasons, I, my shot, uh, like in high school, I shot the ball well. I was a mm-hmm. good shooter. I could shoot from three, anywhere mid-range, you know. Mm-hmm. First two seasons, getting adjusted to the college game, I kind of went through a little mix-up in my shot. I changed my shot a little bit, not for the better, and mm-hmm. that kind of screwed me up a little bit. I was lacking confidence, um, and that was that was a really big part especially my sophomore year when I got when I, even when I got all the, all those uh, minutes mm-hmm. the minutes in, increase for my freshman season but um after my sophomore summer um I was working on my shot um and I think just like the new coaching staff and the atmosphere that they created around our new team for my junior season um and how well we played together and unselfishly we played together and um just the freedom and confidence they gave me really helped mm-hmm. me I know just shoot better because I had confidence that every time you know I was kicked the ball and I was open that every one of my teammates and every one of my coaches believed in me mm-hmm. to put it up and that it was going to go in so um just knowing that and having having more confidence really helped me and as far as like the work I put in I definitely mm-hmm. worked on my shot a lot and in the summer, I mean, I didn't, I didn't work out like an extreme amount like every day. I mm-hmm. when when I would shoot, I would shoot for an hour, for a good hard hour, and put mm-hmm. in like intense work. But I wouldn't shoot for like three or four continuous hours, just like repping my shot. So I'm mm-hmm. um, kind of relaxed a lot, and also put in the work, and I think that helped me a lot. I learned how to you know, compartmentalize and focus on what I was doing in, in the gym when I was there for like an hour. And then when I was out of the gym, I just relaxed and didn't think about it as much. So I learned how to do that. That was a big part for me, I think. I think that's kind of the best way to do it. It sounds like you didn't really like overwork yourself and uh, kind of just get fatigued, I guess. Because I mean, sometimes if you go out there and shoot for like three or four hours, you're going to get tired. And then you might even like lose confidence if you once you see shots you know, not going in, if you're fatigued, you're tired and stuff. So I feel like kind of going with that, you know, one hour of just strong shooting and then call it a day after that. I mean, that's probably the best way to do it. It really helped you. You made a huge jump there. I mean, I know you had that game against James Madison this past season. You had 27 points. Um, You're 10 of 11 from the field, 6 of 7 from 3. So the efficiency that you had this past season was, you know, it was was up there. I'll, I'll say that. Um, it was definitely up there, and you looked really confident, as you've kind of talked about here. Um, I want to jump back, you know, kind of to your high school days prior to William and Mary. I know you were rated as the number one point guard in your class, the 2017 class. Um, I know you also played AAU basketball and stuff. So when you kind of had that experience in high school, you obviously had a great career in high school. You have the AAU experience. How that kind of prepare you for Division One basketball? Yeah, definitely. I would say... Um... In high school, I got I got to play on probably I would say the best one of the best AAU teams in the state. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people can argue it, argue that we had a lot of Division One caliber caliber players in the state for my class. So there was a lot of good teams, but mm-hmm. the team I played on, Wisconsin Playground Warriors, you know, we competed at the highest level. We would play nationally in tournaments. We played in the Adidas Gauntlet, 
Um, we won a couple of those events. Um, and then, like, we, we would win, you know, the some of the NY2LA tournaments in Milwaukee where people travel from all around the country to play, and we won a couple of those events too. So mm-hmm. we were a good team, and that – that competition, playing against that in high school, really prepared me for the Division One level. I think because you know you don't get that kind of competition on your high school level most of the time. Although mm-hmm. my senior year of high school, um, playing in the FEA Fox Valley Association, our conference was, conference was actually really good. We had really really talented players my senior year, so that that level of competition was good, and I think that also helped me. Um, mm-hmm. So like when I finished my AU season after my junior year that summer and then I played my senior year it wasn't just a step down from the competition we had some really good teams in my in the FEA my senior year so I'm um, just playing against really good competition and then I mean just for our AAU practices we would we would practice against the the, the team below us like the year younger mm-hmm. like our Warriors team and I mean they had Practice against Jordan McCabe, Tyler Hero, all those guys. Like oh, they wow. had a really good team. So wow. our practices were intense. We would, I mean, we would do some skill work and then mostly just play. So there was no, there was no breaks in AAU, whether it be practice or tournament days. So, I mean, I wow. think that was really good. Yeah, that uh, that doesn't really sound like practice right there. That sounds like the real deal right there. I mean, um, you guys were playing some of the top talent, no doubt about it. And I know in your high school career. Um, you mentioned that senior year, you guys had some really good competition. That was probably your best season of high school basketball. I know you did miss part of your junior season due to injury. Uh, you still averaged 19 points, three rebounds, three assists, still had a great year. And then, obviously, as I said, you came out that senior year and had arguably your best year of college ba- or high school basketball, rather, coming back from an injury. I know I've talked to a lot of guys who have you know, either struggled with it, persevered through it, how was that experience for you? How do you kind of stay focused and, you know, stay there physically, but also mentally at the same time too? You're talking about my senior year? Yeah. 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 So, um, my senior year, that was a pretty interesting experience. That wasn't your average, like rolled ankle kind of injury. I was mm-hmm. in a really bad car accident like the night before my basketball season started. So Man. I was dealing with, you know, some, Head injuries, I had a really bad concussion, a couple skull fractures, you know, I had some shoulder issue, issues, just a really bad concussion, but um, it was just a weird experience because, you know, I was sitting out watching my team play my first couple games of my senior season, and that really sucked for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and once I, like, after that accident, I, I definitely set a game date that I wanted to be able to come back and play for, and that was like four weeks after my my accident and I wasn't supposed to be able to be back for until six weeks after because of my skull fractures mm-hmm. and I actually ended up healing quickly enough and getting cleared enough quickly enough to be able to play in that game I set a goal date for mm-hmm. um and it ended up actually getting snowed out that night so it gave oh. me an extra week oh, there you go. but <laughs> when I came back from that accident and injury um like I wasn't myself my first couple games mm-hmm. and it was a struggle for me because like it was my senior season and I obviously wanted to have a good year and um, have a lot of fun out there. And my first couple games, it was really hard because I wasn't myself. Um, I wasn't in the shape I needed to be to play. And it just felt weird out there because I was obviously coming back from some, from some um, pretty difficult injuries to come back from. Mm-hmm. Um, but like once I came back and became um, myself again as a player, and realized that I could, you know, I was back to playing how I knew how to play. Um, that kind of taught me um, as a person and as a player that, you know, anything is possible really. Like mm-hmm. to look at what happened to me and then to see how I came back and finished my senior season and the success I had, um, that helped me as a player now in college, like as as a toughness level. Like if I look at a, a matchup in the, in a college game against the – all conference type of player or or I'm going through some adversity during the week in practice or even in the game. Like I I can look back and, and tell myself like, look, you went through this and that was pretty, that was pretty freaking hard to go through in high school, but you made it through that. So when I face challenges now in my college career and even 
um, in my life. Like I can look back at that and that, that helps me get through things. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. for sure. I was going to ask you, I mean, what was, you know, one piece of adversity that kind of shaped you or that you kind of had to get through, um, in order to just kind of, you know, maybe use it as a point of realization that, you know, you can really get through anything or, or just as motivation. So, would you say that injury right there was kind of the, the hardest piece of adversity that you've faced in your career so far? Yeah, definitely. And mm-hmm. I mean, that accident was, I mean, I, it was, a, it was truly a miracle that I like survived it, but wow. um, being able to come back and then having such a good year and then making all state as a senior in high school after that, mm-hmm. and then not playing my first like three or four games showed me that like I can, I can be, tough through adversity and make it through just about anything. So that, that helps me as a player, you know, Mm -hmm. show toughness out on the floor and just be, you know, kind of gritty and make it through any kind of adversity, I think. For sure. I mean, first, first of all, I mean, obviously glad you're all right there. Um, Glad that everything turned out fine for sure. I know it's definitely a scary experience. Um, And the fact that you come back and, and play basketball after something like that just makes it all the more, um miraculous i guess you know more of a miracle right there um and you're at you know a division one school right now playing on the highest platform um you know at your age right now so i mean i want to ask you coming out of high school and stuff what kind of made you choose william and mary i know obviously it's a little bit far away from home for you so what kind of had you set on the school and how'd you even find out about it yeah so actually coming out of high school or during AAU, I had a lot of interest from schools on the East coast. Mm-hmm. So I had actually planned a trip uh, for a recruiting trip to go on a bunch of visits. I had five visits set up, I think on the East coast mm-hmm. and my grandma or my grandpa and my mom and I were going to drive out and just drive out to the coast and go down the coast and visit all those schools mm-hmm. on like five consecutive days. And William and Mary actually was not one of them. And I hadn't, like, I didn't know what William and Mary was as a school or hadn't really heard much, heard from the coaches yet at all. Mm -hmm. But when we were actually out on that visit, um, Coach Holmes um, from William and Mary reached out to me and was like, hey, you guys should swing through because we were up in Philly and we were headed down towards Elon. So we had to go through Mm -hmm. Virginia. And they're like, we should swing through uh, one night. So we got there like 7 p.m. on like a, just a, throw together visit kind of thing and um you know met the coaches talked to a couple of the guys talked to coach and he actually gave me an offer coach Shaver gave me an offer that night wow. and then i i ended up that was in june and mm-hmm. so then I, pl- I played that next july or the july after that for the live period in aau mm-hmm. and the staff at lemon mary coach kimball coach shaver coach holmes all those guys recruited me probably the hardest out of anybody and you know they always had at least one guy up every one of my games. So I really, you know, I really like the coaching staff and the players. And when I was there on my visit, I liked the area. I liked the school. Obviously mm-hmm. it's a really good academic school. Um, and then just the team atmosphere that it showed um, was something that I really liked, even though it was so far from home. So that's why I committed. Um, and then, you know, just kind of a second story why I chose after my sophomore year when the coaching shit, coaching staff changed. I know I was, I was in the transfer portal just to try to protect myself, just hopefully not get stuck in a position um, where I, with a coach that didn't recruit me where I would be stuck that far from home mm-hmm. in a situation that wasn't good. But then when coach Fisher and the new staff got there, um, I just knew right away that I wanted to play for those guys. And then it was a great group of coaches um, and they shaped our team to what it was for my junior year season, which was, the most fun I've had in a college season my whole career so far. So I'm, I'm glad that I decided to stay once again. So, mm-hmm. well, that's quite the, quite the story right there. Um, it sounds like, you know, once you got to uh, William and Mary, you just kind of realized that it was the place for you. And I have to ask you this now too. I mean, how do you like the East coast? Is this kind of the first time you've been away from home in your life and how are you just kind of adjusting to, you know, being that far away? Yeah. It's- coming coming out to school is definitely the first time I've been away from home. Mm-hmm. Midwest kid, home by kind of guy. Like all my family is around me in mm-hmm. Wisconsin. So 
at first it was definitely a big adjustment. Um, I was a little homesick my freshman freshman year, mm-hmm. but I, I kind of like the East Coast. I like the area. Um, I like I like Williamsburg though. The area around me is it feels it feels like a lot smaller of a campus than it actually is. Mm-hmm. Um, not a big city feel, so I like that. I'm not a big city kind of guy. Like mm-hmm. some of the places we travel, where there's big cities up on the coast, I'm not a big fan of that. But I like the area a lot, so that's great. I'm definitely more comfortable now. That's great. That's great to hear. Yeah, I mean, we kind of did the opposite thing here. You're out from Wisconsin, came out to the East Coast. I'm from the East Coast. I went out to Wisconsin. So um, definitely a little bit different. I'm still trying to kind of get used to the the Midwestern uh, style of living out there and stuff. One thing I didn't realize, I don't know if you realize this, but like all the brand names out there and like all the brands and stuff, completely different. Like I didn't know... I didn't know anything about Wisconsin brands when I headed out there. And, um, like, just the grocery stores, for example. Like, Pick and Save, I had no idea what that was. And then people were telling me to go to Pick and Save, and I'm, I don't know what, what they're talking about. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. Um, so uh, that's kind of something you got kind of got to get used to, um, just kind of getting adjusted to the lifestyle and stuff. So um, I'm glad to hear that you're kind of getting in the swing of it now, feel more comfortable there. That's always good. Um, and I know you're approaching the senior season now too. So what are you kind of looking forward to in this senior season? Uh, what are some goals that you have for yourself and for this team? Well, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to my senior season. It's blown, it's gone by so fast. It's mm-hmm. crazy that I'm already here, but, um, you know, we got a, another, another new team coming in. We had four guys graduate last year. So we got a bunch of new faces, a lot of new guys will be put into new roles. I'm looking forward to a, a bigger leadership uh, role um, for the p- position I'm in this year, mm-hmm. which I'm ready to embrace. Um, you know, I'm just looking to continue to play uh, with confidence and have fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, what happens happens. Um, I'll be um, excited to get going and, you know, if I'm playing freely and playing confident and having fun out there. Mm-hmm. I'm sure my play will continue to be, um, as good as it was last year and maybe better. So I'm just looking forward to it. And mm-hmm. I mean, I'm definitely, it's definitely going to be a different year. Um, mm-hmm. We got some different, like we'll definitely play different as a team. Yeah. Um, But I'm, I'm excited for it. So it should be fun. You're, you know, coming off a great season. So you can definitely build off this past year for sure. Uh, you're going to be, you know, one of the leaders on this team. So I'm sure you're looking forward to kind of stepping into that role um, being one of these veterans that kind of lead the way for some of those newer guys, some of those younger guys, and I'm sure you guys are going to see some more success this year coming off a great season, you know, 21-11 and 11 last year, um, so you can only go up from here. I always like to end the interview on one, you know, pretty fun question, and then a question you might have thought about, might not have. Uh, it's really the, the $1 million question to close up, but this first question here, what's kind of a fun fact, something people might not know about you, um, just something about yourself that kind of, you know, might fly under the radar? Well, um, I mean, there's a couple of things I could say, but a lot of people that kind of know me around campus and my family would know that I would say this for sure, but I'm actually a huge fisherman. Um, mm-hmm. I love, I'm a lot, I love bass fishing and there's actually a lot of places around campus where I can do that. That's perfect. Um, one of the, uh, weird facts about me is like, I would, fi- I fished a lot last year and mm-hmm. I claim that the more I fish, the better I play. Really? So, um, I mean, I would get my extra work in, get my shots in, but when it was, when I got my work done, school work done and practice was over, I would just go relax and go fishing. And I don't know, it worked well for me last year, definitely. Cause I, I fished a lot more last year than I did my freshman and sophomore year. So yeah. that's a fun fact. Yeah. Then so. keep doing it. Then keep doing it. I mean, um, instead of practice, just go fishing. I mean, if you're catching more fish and playing better, you might as well. I mean, whatever works, right? I guess I, I was always conscious of like, if I didn't play well, that I would just not fish as much because then everybody would be like, he's just fishing too much. But I made uh, sure that I was getting my extra work in and that if I was fishing, I was going to be playing well. So. Well, there you go. You got to balance it. You got to have fun in, the, in the, uh, the downtime there. So, I mean, keep doing it. The more fish, the better. And, um, I mean, who knows? Maybe you catch the most fish you've ever caught this season, have the best year of your life. So, 
uh, you gotta keep a, you gotta keep us updated right there. You gotta let us know how the fishing goes and how that equates to your season right here. So um, we'll definitely see what happens there. But to close up here, Luke, I mean, the question I always like to end on is, uh, where would you like to see yourself in like we'll say three to five years down the road if you could kind of craft the perfect situation, perfect scenario to put yourself in? What would that be? Wow, that's that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a tough one. It's a million dollar question right here. Got to end strong. I mean, I've always seen myself um, coming back to Wisconsin, living in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to, in, in three to five years, I'd like to be, you know, probably living in Wisconsin. You know, like I said, you never know what's going to happen. So I can't mm -hmm. for sure say that, but living in Wisconsin, um, you know, with a good job, I'm not exactly sure what that is yet. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, I'm a family man, so starting a family someday and, you know, being able to support a family. So mm -hmm. that's, that's in the future, but that's kind of a goal. I see myself at, uh, in the future. So great goal to have right there. Um, you know, certainly set yourself up nice for it right here. Believe it or not, you know, this is the final year of college. I'm sure it's kind of, seemed like it went way too quick um past four years probably just kind of flew by and wishing you nothing but the best of luck in your senior season here congrats on a great junior year congrats on a great career so far at william and mary looking forward to see what you do this upcoming season but luke lowey i mean thanks so much for joining us here on the site today great to have you on and we'd always be glad to have you on again absolutely thanks so much no problem at all we'll put your twitter down below so people can go follow your season this year and you know post career at William and Mary, and we'll also put a link to William and Mary's website as well, just to follow for news and updates on the team this upcoming season as they're coming off that great 21 and 11 year. So make sure you go check them out. But guys, thanks so much for joining us here on Edge Sports Network today. Another interview in our summer series. Hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, we'll see you guys next time.